Hi, this is Dennis Consorti. I am with PolitiPeeps, and we've got a very special guest on our show today. Uh, her name is Ega Niviana. Did I pronounce that right? Yes. Okay, awesome. So, Ega, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and uh, the piece that, that I actually found with Matthias's help. I'm from uh, Greenland, and specifically from Upanavik, which is in the north Greenland. I am currently based in Nuuk, the capital of Greenland. And um, yeah, I think the piece that you're talking about is the one from NBC News. And uh, I wrote an article regarding Trump wanting to buy Greenland. Yes, and I, I saw that uh, uh, Dr. Nordvig posted that article. Uh, Matthias, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm um, uh, Dr. Matthias Nordvig. I teach um, uh, Nordic studies and, and arts, and culture, and society at the University of Colorado in Boulder. Yeah, and so what happened was uh, Matthias posted your story on Facebook, and I saw it in my feed, uh, because not only do we work together, but we are now Facebook friends. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I saw this story and I said, you know what, I should reach out to her. And I reached out to you. It wasn't hard to find you. And we had a really good conversation about Greenland and your experience there. And it started out with this idea of purchasing Greenland. Do you want to talk about when you heard that news that, that uh, President Trump said he wanted to buy Greenland, what was going through your mind? I got a call in the morning um from bbc and i haven't i didn't read it actually before they told me so i thought it was a joke and i was kind of confused that that was up for debate um but what i was thinking or what got me upset or i don't know what made me think a lot was the the way they spoke about greenland as if they as if we were something to buy not only the land but it was not us who were being asked, it was Denmark. Gotcha. Yeah, and uh, Matthias, you're, you're actually from Denmark. Uh, from your perspective, when you heard that news, what was going through your mind? Well, I mean, I, I, first of all, I was thinking along the same uh, uh, lines as Aka. I mean, this is a, this is a subject for Greenland um, in, in principle. Of course, there is a political structure right now that makes it a subject for Denmark too, in that sense that the uh, American government would uh, contact Denmark for these uh, discussions. Um, aside from that, I, I, I was uh, thinking about, of course, the, um, the, the, the history between Denmark and Greenland and, and what would that, uh, uh, sort of what, would, what new kind of history would come out of a, a relationship between Greenland and the United States and and uh, well, just uh, I would just say to say the least that I was worried, <laughs> you know, <laughs> from these discussions. I I, I would just uh, say one thing. I, th I think Aka made a really uh, good point that um, one of the biggest problems currently between uh, Greenland and Denmark is that uh, uh, Greenlanders are not uh, uh, receiving the uh, the respect and status that they deserve in, in the, uh, the, the Commonwealth of however we want to call it, this um, um that is the, the construction that, uh, that gives Denmark some kind of sovereignty over Greenland. Yeah, I, I think that it's, from what I read, the, the process of becoming fully autonomous is going to take some time. And there are some things that Greenland does for themselves, but there are some things that uh, Denmark still plays a big part in. And we'll get into some of that in some of the other interviews when we talk about uh, the sort of social safety net and the taxation involved and, and what that means. But for now, um, you touched on a good point, Matthias. Now, Ega, you said that the U.S. base, there's like one road in Greenland and it goes to the base and that's it? Uh, no, it's like at the main airport, or what do you say, this old American base, where, which functions as, yeah, the main airport for the big flights, or for the flights from Denmark. Um, and I can't remember how long it is, but it's like the longest road we have, and it's not that long. So, 
um, like the infrastructure. Um, yeah, we talked about it regarding to the infrastructure of Greenland that every city is like, um, like isolated from each other or separated by water. And you said it's very expensive just to travel from city to city. Yeah, it's super expensive because we have one airline, airline company. Yeah. And also because we're not that many people and the distances. So it's, yeah, it's super expensive. Uh, I, one thing that you could also say, say in this regard is that um, a, a Greenland right now, I would say, uh, suffers from the history of monopolies that have been in place uh, by the colonial structure uh, that uh, was in place before uh, 1953. And, and, and that's sort of a heritage that lives on, which means that typically you have one company that does one thing and then, you know, supplies all the services in that area. And that's, of course, part of, you know, making everything incredibly expensive. I think, uh, Aga, you were talking about how pretty much all of your produce comes from Denmark. They have a monopoly on that. Is that right? Um, we get all the import is, yeah, it's important from Denmark. So like vegetables, fruits, and milk, like basically everything is super expensive here. And that's in comparison to what, what people make for a living. Now, just to put this into perspective for people, I think there are what, about 56,000 people who live in Greenland and it's about the size of what, Texas, I think? Greenland is like this three times of Texas, I think. Yeah, I think uh, it, I was uh, there's a, a site online where you can uh, actually place uh, Greenland into uh, the maps of the U.S. and it looks like uh, the uh, the coastal stretch of Greenland goes uh, pretty much from Vancouver to Tijuana. So that that's the measurements that we're dealing with here. It's a, it's a huge place. Yeah, and in a previous talk with Matthias, we we discussed some of your history. Um, the history of the Inuit people and and how um, life was before urbanization and how people traveled and shared things. Can you talk a little bit about that culture of, say, voluntary sharing? Right. Historically? Yeah. I mean, back in time when, I mean, we have a rough, like, we have rough climate here, like in the winter, rough winters and stuff. So... Um, and we, uh, Inuit lived on small settlements around the coast and on small, what do you say, islands. So, and the people there had needed each other to survive. So, you know, they had to share the food. They had to share, you know, the heat, you know, all of these things, because, I mean, it was a question of survival back then. So, I mean, we couldn't afford... I say we, I said the, the Inuit couldn't afford anyone to die because they needed anyone, everyone. So that's kind of how um, that shared, what do you say, economy, you know, it, yeah. And that, that, was there anyone enforcing that or was that more of a cultural thing? I think it was more of a cultural thing and because everybody knew that it was necessary. Interesting, good. So that brings us to today. What's Greenland like today? Like, I'll give you an example, in the US, we fight about politics a little bit. We, mm. and we have certain issues that are very divisive. And a challenge for us is to figure out that common ground across different political ideologies. You were saying that there's something like that in Greenland, that even to the point of uh, how involved you are with Denmark. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean... It's kind of the same here, you know, all these political ideologies that trying to, you know, um, we're trying to agree and we're not that many people. So it, it can get, get pretty intense. And um, I think there's diff a lot of different um, perspectives on how it would be best for a country. Like if we, talk, if we say independence, you know, there, there's, that's a debate that is really, yeah, relevant. Yeah, and it's really... Um, intense um, yeah it's in, yeah intense i think it's the right word like um because there's a lot of emotional what is the aspect aspects linked to it because um because say denmark have been here for 
forever almost you know for 300 years at least is where we say the colonial history began um with denmark and that means that a lot of us have roots in denmark too you know danes and these um the danes that lives here also i mean this is what they feel like is their home so and at the same time there's this wish for independence within the greenlandic uh society and this uh wish for like self-control uh like uh, meaning you know of our own land our own lives and economy so there's a lot of different emo uh, emotions involved and i think that can make it really hard to talk about these things without it feeling like it's personal or that you feel that you get attacked yeah, Individ yeah. so let, let's talk about that real quick if you were to say something positive about the relationship between greenland and denmark what would you say i would say that for the, re the recent years that there's been a lot of interesting conversations and uh, i feel that there is a bigger wish for from the Danish society to understand uh, like Greenland. And of, of course, it's not everyone <laughs> who wants to learn and understand about Greenland. And there's still a lot, a lot of prejudice and stere like stereotypical, um, what is it? Yeah, a lot of stereotypes linked to us, especially when we live in Denmark. Yeah, so, is that something you see, Matthias? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I was just reading a, uh, a survey on this uh, not so long ago, and the, the majority of, uh, of the Danish youth has very, very little knowledge about Greenland. Um, one of the stereotypical tropes is that um, alcoholism is rampant in Greenland. And uh, a little fun fact about this is that the, the consumption of alcohol per capita in Greenland is lower than it is in Denmark. So that just tells you how how a prejudice is completely <laughs> different from from the reality. But this is also something to do with um, the way uh, that the Danes typically have encountered Greenlanders in Denmark um, because of the social welfare state that was established in uh, the 1950s. Um, it's a little older in Denmark, but was established in the 1950s in, in Greenland. Um, the social issues of Greenland have been transported to Denmark by literally transporting people, um, which means then that uh, Denmark would be the place where you could get certain services. This would also be uh, the situation with the people committing crimes. They would be transported to Denmark to, uh, to serve time in prison. And that, of course, then brings that part of the population into uh, the, the visible areas in, in Denmark. I think that has a lot to say in, in, in terms of like how Danes uh, perceive Greenlanders. It is changing a little bit, um, but it, uh, it, it, in my opinion, should go a lot faster. Um, aside from that, what we have also, so um, just to speak a little bit about the, the history, um, uh, the, the colonial era uh, starts officially, so to speak, in uh, 1721, uh, where the colonial trade stations are uh, established, especially Nuuk, but also others. And um, uh, then you have a colonial relationship, um, what we could call official colonial relationship between Denmark and Greenland up to 1953, where then uh, there's a change in the constitution and Greenland uh, is then turned into um, what would best translate uh, to a county, uh, a regional county of some sort, where, where it's directly under the Danish government in terms of administration. And this is where the Danish government then implements uh, the social welfare uh, system and also begins uh, expanding the cities and closing down the little settlements that you find in the fjords. So in a sense, forcefully moving people from their traditional way of living into uh, concrete apartment buildings. And that of course also creates social problems uh, of, of uh, all kinds because people are moved from where they traditionally live. They're moved away from their uh, expanded families and uh, then are forced to live in nuclear family style 
housing and uh, and and forced to live like Danes, basically. Yeah. That that really creates uh, social problems. Let me just jump in real quick. Um, now, Ega, you had expressed the issue of suicide in Greenland. There are, there are a lot of depressed people. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we have really high suicide rates in Greenland. And I'm not, I, I'm pretty sure, I actually think that we have the highest suicide rate in the world. And um, I mean, there's a lot of theories about that. That is like the darkness and everything. But um, I think that it also stems from these, uh, these colonial history, because there's a lot of things that we are not uh, talking about at a structural level, you know. And for me, I think that some of the issues is also that we treat these uh, issues as individual cases. When it's um, what I've been thinking, I think that we have to start looking at it in different ways that is, uh, yeah, from a structural point of view, yeah. Yeah, I think so. And, and maybe when you speak with Edward in uh, our next interview, you can talk about maybe some of the economics behind this and, and what some of those factors are. Ega, how do, we, how do we find your work online? I have not published my web page yet, but I usually use my Instagram and my Facebook page. Yeah, and it's Ega Niviana with two A's and not the A with the hat. <laughs> very good, very good. And you also have some pieces uh, on NBC and you've got some climate videos. Yes, and uh, there is also an article on The Guardian um, written by Bill McKibben where the, the video, the climate video is on too. Okay, awesome. Um, and Matthias, how do, we, how do we find your stuff online? Well, you can uh, always go to uh, Nordic Mythology Channel dot com and and find my uh, uh what i do there i i publish um uh, usually uh, i publish a little uh, blog posts with my youtube videos but i also uh, publish more extensive blog posts about uh, various issues that uh, interest me and have some kind of relationship to that nordic world that i come from in different ways and uh, you can also find uh, me on Instagram and Facebook um, through my name, Matthias uh, Nordvik. Awesome. All right. This is Dennis Consorti with Politipeeps. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. <laughs>